Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 982. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 982, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about adding with one criteria, and we want to see how the sum if function is better than sum product or d sum. Now, this video will uh, the functions we look at will work at in any version sum if, sum product, and d sum. We're going to start with d sum. Now, d sum is a great is an amazing function because it can add with one or two or three. It can do and or or criteria. It's quite amazing. But you always have to list the field name. So here we have we, and we want to add all of um, when we see we here, add all the sales from here. But you have to list the field name and the criteria. So if I want to copy it down a column, it's prohibitive. But dsum really is amazing if you have just a single cell. So I'm going to use dsum. Now you need a database. That means you have to have field names at the top. Now sometimes that's not possible, um, but the database function needs those. For example, you could use sum if without field names at the top. But I'm going to highlight this database field names at the top. Control Shift Down Arrow, comma, and then the field. That's asking for the field uh, which you want to do the adding. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to double click that and F9. The F9 key evaluates. Oh, but look at that. It'll give me sales in double quotes. That's one way to enter this uh, criteria into the field name. Comment. You could, by all means, leave it a cell reference. And then the criteria. Here's the big drawback to D, all the D functions. There's D sum, D count, D counta, D standard deviation. Um, but you have to list the field name and the criteria below. Now, I'm going to F4 that. Oops, I'm not. I'm not going to F4 that. I'm going to hit the F4. Notice the F4 key is a toggle. It toggles through all the cell references. I don't want any dollar signs. I meant to lock this one. But watch this. I'm going to highlight just a little colon in between and now hit the F4. So it'll lock that one. I want this one locked, that one not. Now, this function, Control Enter, it calculates the right answer. And if you set your table up like this, which means field name criteria, field name criteria, you can copy this down. Copy, Control V, Control V. Notice the relative cell references work just fine. Now, that works. That means we actually can copy it down like this. However, there's many reports where you just do not want this word product there. In addition, if you were ever to use more than one criteria, then it kind of gets really unwieldy to do this. So that really is a drawback to the dsum. dsum also will take calc uh, longer to calculate the formula, and we'll look at that on the timesheet in just a moment. Sum product is a great alternative way to do this too. And the thing about the sum product is in 2003 or earlier, you could do two or three or four criteria, no problem. There are some advantages to the sum product. But when it comes to one criteria adding, there's no advantage of some product over some if. Well, if you had um, open and closed uh, workbooks and you had workbook reference, there might be some advantage. But here again, we're just adding with one criteria. So the array, well, I want to add all these numbers. So I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow. That's the first array. Now, I have array array. The second array has to give me ones and zeros from this column that correspond for the we. So I need 1, 0, 0, 1. So that when we multiply these two arrays, it'll be 1 times that, 0 times that, 0 times that, 1 times that, and then some product will add. The product part multiplies the two arrays, and the sum part adds. So I'm going to just highlight this whole column, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then I'm going to directly use my comparative operator and say, is anything in there equal to we? Now, if I were to highlight this, you can click on this uh, argument right here and use the F9 key just to look at it. Notice it gives me a bunch of trues and falses. Now, that's not what I want, so I'm going to Control Z because some product cannot understand those trues and falses directly. So we have to convert them to ones and zeros. Any math operation will convert trues and falses to ones and zeros for some product, but double negative is the fastest and most efficient means to do this. Now, notice this is a math operator. This is a comparative operator. This happens at the bottom of how Excel calculates. So to force that equal sign to calculate before the double negative, you have to isolate it in double parentheses. All right, so now that 
if I highlight the uh, that little argument and hit F9, you can see we have our ones and zeros. Now the sum product can do its thing. And I better lock these. I'm forgetting to lock these. I'm going to highlight that colon and F4, and then highlight that colon and F4. Control Enter, and then copy it down. All right, so sum product can easily do what sum if can do in that it can be copied down a column with the criteria just sitting next to it. The disadvantage to the sum product over sum if is that we do have to use this uh, syntax to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros, and it will take considerably longer to calculate. All right, and then sum if equals sum if. This really, if you're adding with one criteria, and um, in any version you should use this. In 2007 or later, might as well use sum ifs with an s. But one criteria, sum if can't be beat compared to these other two options. The range, that's the criteria range. So I click there, Control Shift Down Arrow. Comma. Notice I'm not adding a direct comparative operator touching the range here, saying, is anything in there equal to you? Type a comma, and the criteria is simply boom. That's it. It'll do that for us. It's programmed to go through and get all the trues and falses and then jump over and get the right numbers. Comma, sum range. I always get confused by range and sum range, but I remember that the word sum is there, so those are the numbers I want to add. Control Shift Down Arrow, and there you go. It's the easiest to, pretty easy to create. It doesn't need the field names down, uh, set up down here in the criteria area. It doesn't need the field names at the top of the table. It doesn't need any special syntax. And in just a moment, we'll see that it calculates quite fast. Man, I forgot to F4 these, to lock these as we copy down. We only want the criteria to move relatively. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, now let's go over to the sheet right here. And I went ahead and timed this. Right click, delete, move this over here. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt WG. That's in 2007 or later to zoom to selection. All right. So we, we got our number right there. And look at this. The I timed it. And by the way, if you want to time your own formulas, uh, Excel MVP Charles Williams has this amazing website, and you can d download this code. There's even code for Office 12 or Office 14. Amazing article about how to speed up spreadsheets. But look at this when we calculate, and the average. So these are the averages, and these are the percentage increase in times. So 6, 7.17, and 10 approximately. And look at this. Here's the additional time in which dsum takes, the additional time in which sum product takes over sum if. Now, you know, if you have a small data set or you don't have a lot of uh, formulas, then it doesn't matter at all. You'll never notice the difference. But in large spreadsheets with lots of formulas, it can make a huge difference. I mean, about 20, about 70% uh, savings uh, or percentage times that it takes longer to calculate. All right. Sum if instead of sum product and desum. We'll see you next trick.